Hi guys, it's Katie Hess with Tate and Bugs, where we have been taking you along our journey with our Fixer Upper house for the last year. If you've been following along, you'll see that we've kind of hit kind of a little dry spell for a little bit until we can get some more materials to finish up our house. And so in the meantime, I'm going to just try to show you a different project each week um, up until we were able to get back onto the vlog style videos of fixing up our entire house. If you are new to our channel, be sure to go to our Putting Down Roots playlist and click on the very first video so that you can see how far we've come on our Fixer Upper house. And if you like what you see, then be sure to click that subscribe button as well as the little notification bell so that you can be notified when we drop a new video and also so you guys don't miss a thing. This week I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to make a lamp out of chicken feeders for above our fireplace in our living room. I'll have all the materials and the tools that I use listed down below in the description box. Hopefully you guys enjoy this video. Now let's get started. It's not time to decorate our house yet, but it is time to start finding light fixtures for each of the rooms. Here in the living room, we decided to go with this ceiling fan and can lights, just so that we didn't have a light hanging nice and low and hitting people in the head. So, what I wanted to do, because I love light fixtures so much, is to bring one above the fireplace. Right now, we have this temporary little light up here. It was this big inset light with little reflectors on the inside, and Jared took it down and put up a basic little junction box. So we're gonna use that one so I can hang any light that I want, but I wanted something that would kinda, I don't know, like be a piece of art and be kind of dimly lit so that it was a cozy little light rather than all of the can lights on. So something I had in mind for a while were chicken feeder lamps because, not lamps, chicken feeders, lamps made out of chicken feeders, because um, I had bought several of them with that intention for over the dining table or something, I don't even know. At the time, we didn't even know what house we were gonna move to. So I went up to the shop the other day and I found some chicken feeders. And some of them were too big, but then I found these three. Then I brought them inside to see if they would fit or if they would hang over too much. And I think they're gonna be perfect. So what my plan is, I'm gonna build a real shallow wood box at the very top, and that will be kind of like the, the canopy to hide all the wires and things. And then all the wires individually will go up through that and then meet up in the top. But rather than just having a bulb hanging, I wanted to drill a bunch of holes in them in different designs to be able to cast cool shadows on the wall and stuff. I've done that before with a couple other lamps, so I'll insert those pictures now so that you can see what I'm talking about. Alrighty, so here I am with the chicken feeders. I beat, I beat Tucker. You beat Tucker? Yeah. You're crazy fast. The first step is to wrap all the way around with masking tape so that you can go in with a pencil or a Sharpie or a marker or whatever and mark your pattern that you want. The first couple times I did this, I taped printer paper on, which really didn't do very well because as I drilled, it ripped up the paper and it was just really difficult. So this time I'm trying it differently. Here we go, first one down. If you don't wanna use chicken feeders or if you can't find chicken feeders, this would look super cool with any kind of old can or like a coffee can or something and it would probably be easier to drill into because this is galvanized and aluminum is so much easier you could probably even just use a nail and a hammer all right next i'm going to take my fabric tape measure and go ahead and mark lines all the way around i am super not a good freehand person like some people can just hold it and kind of like draw their design all the way around but mine will end up like up here and down here and it won't match so Depending on how well you are at this kind of thing, um, I'm not good at it. So I need to kind of draw myself, kind of like a little grid. So I might draw like a, I don't know, like say a two inch grid at least. 
so I can kind of see where my points are and then I can draw my design based on that grid. I'm gonna mark my centers first just so I don't get to the end and realize that I don't have enough room for a two inch gap or something. If you guys are like me and math isn't your forte, these things, the fabric tape measures are awesome because you can just fold it right to your 28 and a quarter, fold it in half and see exactly where that lands you at your center line. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and mark my quarters and then I might just keep dividing it on in there. But I'm gonna go ahead and make a grid just so that I can have an easier time making my patterns. All right, so I've got my grid all drawn out. If you want a more detailed pattern, definitely make your grid smaller. Uh, I think I'm gonna think about my pattern a little bit and then I might make some of the grids smaller so I can do um, like a little arrow pattern or something and then I can mark my center line that way. Um, but for the most part, this is it. And then go ahead and you can look for inspiration on Google Images, it's the stock images and stuff, or just follow your lines and make up your own thing. What I like to do is use a larger circle for some and then smaller and make sure you draw that so that you kind of remember what size holes you're going to use unless you're going to use all the same size drill bit. All right, here are my designs. One thing I would definitely caution you against is going too dot crazy. It's so easy to get carried away and just go dot, 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 dot and make all these cute little designs. But then when you start drilling, it takes, it's time consuming. It's really, really worth it because it looks awesome, but it is very time consuming. So keep that in mind as you're drawing your dots. All right, now it's time for the super time consuming part. I've got the biggest bit that I'm gonna use and I'm just gonna go ahead and get the big holes out of the way. baby. It looks light. It's gonna be. So I just got these new bits today and I cannot remember the last time I purposely bought brand new bits. Watch this. <laughs> it's crazy. Crazy what new bits will do for you. There's one down. If you want to get a good representation of what it's going to look like when it glows, you can look inside like this. Oh, it kind of looks like a washing machine bin. All right, so it's time to take the masking tape off, but it's not coming off very easy. It's just peeling because I've got it cut in lots of places. So I'm going to just try to soak it in our water trough and see if that works. So I let them soak for a little bit and it comes off way, way easier than it did when it was dry. So that is the way to go. If you do have issues with your tape coming off, go ahead and spray it with this crud cutter. This is, if you've been watching our videos, you'll know this is my favorite cleaner. It gets everything off. So I don't know what the deal with this one was. The tape came off so fast and easy on these two but on this one it did not want to come off very well so just spraying it down and then it comes off pretty easy after that and i'm just using a razor blade to kind of pull up my edges next i'm going to give them a good wire brush cleaning on the inside and on the outside i've got this wire brush attachment for the outside just to get the rest of the residue off that didn't come off and then i'll just use this little handheld one for the rest on the inside which isn't that bad honestly all right one of the most important steps is hammering all these barbs down um, you don't have to worry about it if you know it's going to be out of reach and just remember that it's sharp when you go to change the bulb but i like to hammer them down you could also use an angle grinder but i think the angle grinder would make it way too shiny and you're going to go on the inside and hammer over the holes and just rotate it every so often to get it on a flat surface sharp edges always 
but they won't stick up near as much. You can go in with a file also if you want. I might go over mine with a file, just like a metal file, and smooth things down even more. All right, the last thing that we're gonna do before we start wiring them up is gonna give them just a good cleaning with none other but the crud cutter, again. I guess you could have done this before you started drilling all the holes. That probably would have been a good idea. All right, I got them all cleaned up and we're ready to wire. So there is this company on Etsy that I love getting my wiring stuff from, but to save money, I salvage lighting and wiring and sockets whenever possible. Today I'm gonna to be using the wiring from these brooding type looking lamps. I got these off of Craigslist. Four of them are like 15 bucks or something. So uh, if in the future I ever wanna use these again, I can easily rewire them up. So I'm gonna take the wiring apart and get it down to just the sockets and the wire. I got these little rubber grommets to put in the top just because when you're drilling through metal, you don't want your wiring constantly in contact with a sharp edge. So these little grommets will help push inside and keep the wire safe. All right, so these grommets are made for a flat surface, not a curved one. So we'll see if these, if this, these might not do anything for this. I might have to use resort to hot glue or something. So the next thing is I want my bulb to sit in the center of the can. Put, I'm gonna put the socket kind of where I want on the inside and then put my hand where I need the knot. Right about here. So they make these little stoppers that you can get and they slide on and then you just screw it nice and tight. Um, but I couldn't find them. And so I'm gonna tie a knot. And you definitely wanna make sure you tie a knot and not let it just sit on the socket because that's way too much pressure to put on the wires themselves. Another option for stopping the socket and the bulb exactly where you want would be to use some big zip ties. This actually might be a better option uh, so your bulb doesn't sit crooked and stuff. I don't know. Pull it really, really tight and it shouldn't slide at all. Alrighty, all three of my lamps are wired up. So now I need to go inside and measure exactly how far apart I want them to sit so that I can know how big to build my box. All right, so now I need to decide how far apart I want them. I think I'm gonna go ahead and put the wood just to the edge, like partially in the center, so it's not this huge, massive piece. Okay, since this is the face, it's gonna be completely visible from the underside, so I don't want an edge all the way around to be seen. Um, I want this edge to be seen instead. So, I'm gonna go ahead and cut two more 28 inch pieces for the inside right here. All right, so here it is. This will be on this side. This will be on this side. So then we need to cut a piece that'll fit perfectly inside. And to do that, I'm just gonna butt these two up together. Set it flush to the edge and then take my measurement rather than having to do all sorts of math. It's gonna be right at a four inch piece. Okay, now that I'm looking at this, it's a lot bigger and chunkier than I really wanted. And since a two by four or even a two by three, the actual size of it is only one and a half inches thick. It's not quite two inches. So I think what I'm debating on doing, since this is three and a half, is I think it might just be worth it to table saw these down anyway, so I can have a really nice shallow box. I might just go ahead and take it down to maybe one and three quarters to allow us a little bit of wiggle room. I think we might do that. All right, so these are the screws that I'll be using. I love these screws for, especially for finish work type of things. Um, and they bury themselves really nicely so you don't have this massive screw head. All right, so 
I found some leftover lathing lab, I don't know how you say it, from doing our bedroom closets. And I'm just gonna put it around the base. I think it would add like a really neat, more finished look. As always, I'm using Early American by Minwax. All right, that's it for tonight. We're gonna let it dry. Tomorrow I'll measure and mark my holes, drill them, put the wires in, get it all wired up and hooked up, and we'll see it complete tomorrow. where the blocks go I just want them to be perfectly straight and at the same exact depth so I went ahead and measured how far and I want this to sit so there's my one line for three and a half and then I'll put one on the other side all right so I'm just gonna use this block to kind of get a good idea of how straight it is okay so I'm just gonna tuck these wires in and see how well it fits for now. Oh, you know what I just realized? Yeah. We need to move the blocks in. Knots. In between the wiring. Because right now the knots are in the way. Let's try that again. light bulbs I am so happy with how they turned out I can't wait to see it tonight when all the lights are off and hopefully it'll just provide a really nice warm glow I'm so happy this is exactly what I was hoping to achieve with those chicken feeders and then by the time we get our big chunky mantle up here I think they'll look really really cool I know it kind of steals away from the things that I could do uh, above the fireplace like how a lot of people do like a ginormous clock or a big wreath but I really like the uniqueness that this gives. Instead of putting something on the mantle and building up, it's putting a light above the mantle and having it come down. So I'm really excited. And I think I can totally balance things out and do a couple things on either side. And then Christmas garland. It's definitely a sure way to bring that farmhouse look to our little farmhouse. I really do like that it is really unexpected compared to what a lot of people are doing with their fireplaces. And it kind of serves as a fun little art piece too. Well, totally not sure if I'm doing this right, but I'm gonna try it. <laughs> um, I'm on top of the roof of the garage and where that tree fell and punctured some holes through, well, I cut them out. Check it out. So I cut that square. I'm gonna patch it from underneath. And I don't know how I'm gonna do the shingles, but, and then that big one. Might as well put a skylight in, huh? So we'll see how it turns out, but to be continued. All right, just cut the boards, the plywood, the thicker stuff for the uh, roof to patch it. Cut the two by four, so see if it fits. We'll go up there and patch this thing. All right. 
<laughs> Good timing, air compressor. So, past your first hole. Now I'm working on the big one. Uh, I'll show you guys what it looks like, kind of the process I'm doing. That's where the old one was. So I had to tear up quite a bit. But, patched it, put beams under it. And I'm putting this tar paper down, covering it up. Put another one up there. I lifted those shingles so I can get underneath them. Um, so I'll show you the finished product when I'm done. All right, so hopefully I did that correctly. We will have no more leaks, and that's just a huge burden off my back because it's been leaking since we've been here for like a year. So yeah. hopefully it, you guys enjoyed watching our progress this week. It wasn't very much, but like we always say, a little progress better than no progress. Still progress. Oh, we say that too. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So another thing though, um, UPS, they they came in early with my back pay. So we got back pay, so we're ready to start working on this house now. So Woo! make sure you join us next week. We'll be here, we'll be working, and progress is gonna get done. Yeah, we don't know what we're gonna be doing yet, but make sure you join us next week and you will find out then. Hopefully you enjoyed watching our chicken feeder lamp video too. And if you guys end up making one for yourselves, make sure you send me a picture, I'd love to see it. But for now, thanks guys so thanks much for, for watching. watching, and you'll see us next week. Toodles.